rooted and firm in reality. This Gotham's as close to the ground as it gets. No Lutheran lips, no Mr. Freeze rays, no Clayface or Killer Croc. Just the likelihood for a man to dress up in a rubber bat suit and punch civilians on the tops. Plus the possibility for a crime boss going through a murdering aimlessly and poisoning the public. Which is what makes the Joker intrinsically horrifying as the evil that he enacts is not completely out of reach for an average dad. Compare that with Batman Returns where we have a penguin army shooting rocket launchers at the city through mind control helmets. But between these two, I don't think it's as simple as different strokes for different folks. As I believe that the fine ladies and gentlemen at 89 Industries didn't want to settle with being boring. No, they really wanted to amplify the lunacy of Napier. So they contrasted our stylized yet somewhat grounded 89 Gotham with this over-the-top careless jokester to really hit home that he's off his leash. But instead of a yummy, satisfying, contrasting tone, we get a clashing one. Because this story leads us to believe in this world being, uh, loosely realistic. All the tricks the Joker has up his sleeve are unlikely, yet technically doable. But because of this, we are taken out of Gotham and left thinking. Yeah, right. You think I'm stupid? What are the odds of that really happening? Instead of appreciating Joker for all of his over-embellished goof. And again, compared to Returns, where we had a woman thrown off a bridge. Was it a skyscraper? She died, but only to be resurrected by the power of cats. The tone is 1000% clear that no processing of logic is necessary. So there's no illusion of reality for this move to make. Right from the get-go, we see a baby eat a cat whole. And it's not like Penguin is alone in his wackiness, as there are no grounded characters. All of Gotham is bangers! Which enables us to see Batman be outmatched by a poodle, the Batmobile do a 180 flipper roo roast a demon, then strap a bomb to a strongman and throw him into the sewer before he blows it. All without stopping the movie in his tracks to contemplate. Wait, wait, would that really- wait, wait, would Batman really do that? Meow. <laughs> And with this, I found Returns loads more entertaining and, dare I say, an even better movie. Because what made Returns stick this absurd landing is that there's no discontinuity in its tone. It had goofy people doing goofy things. It did not try to have some deep message to accompany it. It didn't make Cobblepot being abandoned by his parents into some sappy, forced narrative about he's just a product of a broken society. No, instead he's a man shaped and colored like an uncooked turkey who tries to drown every baby in Gotham. I am not a human being! I am an animal! And toss them into a deep, dark, watery grave! Um, penguin? I mean, killing sleeping children, isn't that a little, uh... And I think for 89 to have uniformity with its tone, it would have to either double down on the absurdity, have Joker be even more over the top, have Batman be even more like a bat, or tone them both down to fit the world they live in. 89 can have weird Joker dances, but can't have his goons join in with them. 89 can have the one million meter long barrel revolver coming out of the Joker's pants, but can't have it shoot down the Batwing. 89 can string Vicky along for a weird evening with the Joker, but at least give some explanation as to why she's stumbling around like a drunken zombie. Now I know it's time to stay inside the lines. But once you've done it, Busto, you got a masterpiece on your hands, folks. This town needs an enema. <laughs>